Hi there everyone and welcome to Tech Travers. Today I'm back with yet another Steam Deck emulation tutorial and now why am I doing another one? Well, simply because EmuDeck just released their latest and biggest update yet, EmuDeck 2.0 and as always I thought I would guide you through how to format the SD card and take you through the whole process again. The biggest news this time is a brand new format, EmuDeck now has a GUI to make it even easier to use and they've added a quick settings options as well as a PS Vita emulator and a few other things. Let's jump into it. First off, head into the Steam menu and select System, scroll down a bit and choose Format SD Card, let your Steam Deck format the SD Card and set up a new partition. Remember that you will lose all the files that you currently have on your SD Card. That will take a while, I have sped up the process here, but once it's complete, hit your Steam button again, scroll down to Power and hit Switch to Desktop Mode. In desktop mode, make sure you don't have the uninstall emudeck icon on your desktop. If you do, run that uninstaller first and once that is complete, follow these next instructions. Open Mozilla Firefox and head over to emudeck.com. Click on download and then download app. And open the folder and drag the installation icon to your desktop. Double tap the installation app and hit continue and EmuDeck will fetch the installation software from the web. So make sure you're connected to internet. And just like that, this is the very much improved new EmuDeck installer. Hit custom mode to get going. On this first page, we have to choose where we want the installation to be. You can choose SD card, internal storage or custom directory. And that's if you have an extra SSD in your dock, for example. On the next page, you will choose whether you're on a Steam Deck or Ambernic Win 600, since EmuDeck is available for that device as well. But I'm obviously going to choose Steam Deck. On the next page, you can choose which emulators you want to install or not by clicking their respective icon. For all of you that have been watching my older tutorials, you'll probably notice that everything you could do before can be done now as well, but with the enhanced GUI it will simply make the process easier for you to understand what you're doing or choosing between. On the next page you can configure your retro achievements and you need to add your account that you can get for free from retroachievements.org. If you don't have an account or don't want to get one, you can just continue without typing anything. Next up you can choose to turn bezels on or off. Bezels will add this image overlay on your retro consoles instead of having a black border, which is quite nice. And actually all of the following options are up to your personal taste. It's about aspect ratios and image filters that you may or may not want to change from the original games. The new EmuDeck GUI however will show you examples for every option, so it will be very easy for you to choose. And if you want one and only app in your Steam library to list all your emulators and games, Emulation Station is your way to go. And this lets you choose which theme you want for Emulation Station. You can of course change all these settings later as well. Once you have chosen your Emulation Station theme, the installation process will finally begin and everything will be set up as you have chosen in the previous steps. Once the installation is complete, you can either launch Steam RAW Manager or start adding your games. I'm gonna start adding some games, so I'm gonna click Exit. How you add your games is up to you, but I have all my game dumps conveniently stored on this external hard drive. If you don't know how to add games to play with your newly installed emulators, I have several other guides on that topic among my other videos, so make sure to check those out as well. Once you have added all your games to the right folders on your SD card, just like before, we need to add them to our Steam library using Steam ROM Manager. This time around, however, all those tools and apps are found within the same installer as we used before. So open the installer again and click on Tools and Stuff in the right corner. Click on Steam ROM Manager and the guide will prompt you that Steam will now close in the background and that your right and left mouse button will move to the left and right triggers. However, in this particular guide, I'm using an external keyboard and mouse so that won't affect me. Now all of these next steps are actually exactly as they were in my older guides but I'm still gonna go through it real quick. Choose which emulators you want visible in your Steam library by enabling or disabling parsers to the right. In this guide I have only added my Wii U games so that's the only emulators or parsers that I'm gonna enable. Then click on preview on the top and then generate app list. This will make Steam ROM manager fetch all the artwork for your newly added games. 
And the last thing you need to do if you don't want to swap out any artwork is to click on save app list and then wait until it says done adding removing entries. Exit the installer and return to gaming mode. Hit your Steam button and go into Library and then the Collections tab. And just like that you have all your games there. And even simpler than before we have added emulators and games to our Steam Deck. Huge shout out to the team over at EmuDeck for doing this amazing software and of course also to all the open source emulators who are simply making this whole thing possible. If you want to learn more about how to install game updates, DLCs or enabling gyro controls in Breath of the Wild for example, I have several other guides for that as well. If you like this video please let me know by giving it a like or a comment and if you like my videos in general maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss any future content. That's it for now, catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.